Today on Monkey Life, things are getting heavy at the orangutan nursery. They don't do a belly flop on me. As Oshin and Ame go head to head. Ame! And baby Mikado settles in nicely after his first week at the park. Don't put your nappy in my face, please. This is Monkey World. Nestled deep in the English countryside, it's home to more than 240 monkeys and apes from 16 different species. Dr. Alison Cronin and her team dedicate their lives to rescuing and rehabilitating primates from all over the world. The orangutan nursery at the park is home to a number of youngsters. There's Jolie, Dinda, and Linga. It's a harmonious place, and that's all down to the care and attention they receive from head honcho Ame, who acts as a foster mother to all the young ones. Ame's been with us now for quite a number of years. I first met her in Taiwan. I think it was an amusement park that she was kept outside of in southern Taiwan before the Taiwanese authorities confiscated her. And she must have just been fed way, way too much fizzy drinks because her teeth were just rotten, rotten away. In fact, the dentist said that he had never seen anything so bad in a wild animal before. So over the years, we've done several rounds of dental work on Ame. We've gotten her mouth fit, but she's always been quite a shy and retiring character. Today, Ame's calm demeanor will be put to the test, as Jeremy is preparing the nursery for her first meeting with new arrival, Oshin. For most of her life in South Africa, Oshin had no contact with other orangutans. So Jeremy and Alison don't know how she's going to react. Oshin and Ame have been eyeing each other intently over the last two days. It's all of our guys in the Orang nursery are watching her from all angles. They were watching her outside as the box came in. They're now watching her through the back bedroom doors and she's definitely intrigued. You can see she just keeps coming back over, standing up, surveying, and then dives back in. So she's sort of unsure of all of the orange people at the end of the corridor, but she's drawn back to them like a magnet. She knows there's something there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what she makes of them when there are no walls or no mesh between them. Today's introduction will be a psychological battle between the two orangs, but it could get physical. Ame has virtually no teeth, which makes her less dangerous, but Oshin is twice her weight. Jeremy decides to let Arme out first, and Oshin second. I want this to be on Arme's terms, if possible, and obviously this is Arme's room, so Oshin coming into Arme, I think is better than, um, you know, her getting too cocky and taking claim to something that isn't really hers. Yeah. Picnic time. Right, if you want to shut that now and then start working Oshin down. Now there's going to be a lot of bluff and bravado, a lot of slapping, a lot of coughing puh, puh, at each other. We just have to hope that Jeremy can sort of bridge that gap, make Ame let down her fur a bit, and accept the fact that there might be another adult lady in there. Oshin, come on, darling. Hopefully they then relax and come to some agreement. Oshin. But we'll have to wait and see. Oshin is a little reluctant to come out, so Jeremy tries to coax her towards the entrance. Come on, darling. Come on. Can we get your breakfast? Ame waits patiently, but Oshin remains cautious. She's not wading in like a bull in a china shop, which is good. She's just nervous and she's, she's interested, but she's not committing herself, which is good. And the wait goes on. It doesn't look like Oshin is going to go through to the nursery anytime soon. Oshin's got stage fright, a little bit shy. So um, really, we're going to try and reverse it a bit and actually get Ame and Jolie back out. 
and then we'll get Oshin in here with Jeremy, get her comfortable, and then let Ame and Jolie back into them. So turn the tables a bit and see if we can give Oshin a bit more confidence, because now that the door's open, all of that rubbish has gone away. Stop it. What? Here, have a great instead. <laughs> I love this animal. Girl. Joined at the hip as ever, Ame and Jolie make their way back into the bedrooms so the team can bring it to Oshin. Goodness me, it's the Michelin man. Come on. Hey, no, we got rid of those damn monkeys. It's a bit of... yeah, Don't do a belly flop on me. Oshin spends some time getting acclimatized to the nursery while Ame and Jolie look on. While the team prepare for the big introduction, baby Mikado has had a happy first week at Monkey World. Mikado is an endangered golden-cheeked gibbon. He was born at a zoo in France, but sadly his mother passed away very soon after his birth. Mikado. The zoo were unable to care for him themselves, so primate care staff member Mike went to collect Mikado last week and has been hand-rearing him ever since. He's just settled in just remarkably well. It's just amazing. He lets me know in no uncertain terms if he's hungry and he lets me know if he needs a nappy change in no uncertain terms. When he's ready, Mikado will join female golden-cheeked gibbon Alex, who the team hope will be a good foster mother. So, as well as hand-rearing, Mike needs to make sure that Mikado is also learning natural gibbon behaviour. Oh, look at that! You've got such long arms, they get in the way, don't they? We've got a, a really nice pet cage over there for him. A little teddy which he, he's had all along. Oh, well done, that's the way to do it. We've got dog toys in there for him to climb up on, a few branches for him to swing on. And that is helping him develop uh, because he's actually using them to pull himself up. Nearly. Is it, hold on to that. And of course he'd be developing his muscles and that's the sort of thing he'd be doing with his mother. The cage is the equivalent of a cot for Mikado. Somewhere he Never can feel comfortable. Lad. But it's also a training Goodness crate. Me. The bars and ropes Good enable him to build up his muscles and make his first attempt at climbing. Hey. The climbing apparatus that I've put up in his cage, I like them to be movable because you know, branches and twigs in the jungle um, and in, in his future enclosure are, are moving. So he can't grow up expecting everything to be solid. Whoops. Sort yourself out. Don't put your nappy in my face, please. His face has changed, um, and I think the colour of him is changing as well. His arms are so much more blonder, um, and also he's losing that really... Yeah, I'm not laughing at you, no. No, really, I'm not laughing at you. Um, the colour is gradually going blonde, so he's going through a colour change. Um, oh, you're swinging on the camera. Clever boy. With Oshin settled into the nursery, it's time to release Arme and Jolie. Yeah, shut them out, but be ready, keep it ready to open it quickly if you need to. Hey, good girl. Arme, Arme. No, that's not such a good plan, she's bigger than you. Hey, Things don't go quite as smoothly as the team were hoping. Arme. A terrified Oshin flees as Arme and Jolie give chase. Oshin's frightened and in a new place, and Ame's offended that there's somebody new in her house, and so it's all quite reasonable. And the closer Ame gets, the further away Oshin wants to be. Hey, um, hey, stay with me, stay with me. Watch Ame. Ame feels quite protective of her household and her youngster, so it's fair enough that she's feeling a little bit challenged and aggressive about this, but I mean, she's half Oshin's weight. And prepared to stand up and take it on. Oshin retreats into a corner and is grateful to have her old friend Jeremy around Stay to help there. with Arme. Stay there. Luckily, Jeremy's got such a fabulous relationship with her and he's, you know, developing that with Oshin right now that he could stand in the middle and say, don't do that, no. 
But the chase goes on, and O'Sheen struggles to keep calm. She's 13 years on her own, so she doesn't really understand all of this. I hazard to say if she would actually just sit down calmly and let Ame approach, that it might not be quite so agitated and aggressive. But, you know, you can't explain that. They have to work that out. As the tension rises, yeah. Ame and O'Sheen take to the ropes. Good girl, O'Sheen. O'Sheen looks vulnerable. Hey, stop it! She's not used to moving around at height. Ow, that was my head. Stop it. O'Sheen takes another tumble, so the team decide to call it a day. It's okay. It's what we do here. We'll take our time. Didn't work day one, but, you know, nobody got hurt and everybody got to meet each other a little bit and size each other up. We'll give O'Sheen a bit of encouragement. Jeremy's in there doing his Dr. Doolittle thing, making sure she feels comfortable and happy. You right. We'll leave her in here to become familiar with the room, and then tomorrow we'll go round two, and hopefully it'll be a little bit better. It's introduction day two at the Orangutan Nursery, and the team are hoping that things will run a little smoother between Ame and newcomer O'Sheen. Ame. Don't focus, sir. Oshin is still very nervous and keeping her distance from Ame. But Ame and Jolie seem to be calmer and happy to take things a little more slowly. This is going a whole lot better today, actually. Um, there, Ame isn't quite so frantic and vicious today, so um, just in one day, giving them a break and consideration, there's no vocalizing and they're stopping and looking at each other. So I think we have a great improvement today. And look, yeah, she's not so focused. In an attempt to make the most of the calmer atmosphere, the team send in some sweet corn to help distract and relax them all further. Ame likes hers, but for once, Oshin doesn't seem too interested in food. She's more concerned with the fact that Ame is drinking her squash. Oshin isn't happy and lets out an aggressive bark. Ame reacts and is on the move in Oshin's direction. It's okay. You're a good girl. Ame is actually approaching okay. Oshin okay. more in You're curiosity than okay. anger. But Oshin is too stressed to respond. We would have liked to have um, removed Jolie from the situation, but she's limited on to Ame in the last two days since all of this has gone on. And really, Jolie is almost irrelevant in the sense that she'll take Ame's lead. So if Ame eventually calms down, um, Hopefully Jolie will too, although she's quite mischievous. Oshin and Ame stick to their sides of the room, but it does seem calmer compared to yesterday's drama. Oshin is a very big lady that's just moved into their house and she's clearly got an attitude. So if we can sort of calm Ame and Jolie a little bit and get everybody's nerves steadied, I'm hopeful that we can make some progress. You know, we won't know until the fat lady sings, as it were. Will O'Sheen calm down enough to let Arme near? Good girl. Over on the other side of the park, there's been a large donation of fruit. And today, it's going to the boisterous Bachelor Boys. Rocky and Mojo are first out. They're very nervous. As mid-ranking members, they're not sure what to do. High rankers Jester and Bruxham chase Mojo away. That'll teach him for even contemplating eating the fruit first. And with his heavies laying down the law, Alpha Mayor Butch can just sit back and enjoy his melon. Paco's hoping to muscle in on some of the fruit by displaying how big and strong he is. 
Jester's found a stash of melons and he's not letting Mojo anywhere near them. But Paquito's not getting involved in the bravado and quietly enjoys his two pieces of fruit. Jimmy's found a pineapple and heads to the top table. But he gets nervous when he sees Butch and drops it. Only for Paco to grab it. He's still displaying, but no one's taking any notice. One chimp not letting go of his pineapple is Seamus. He keeps out of the way so he can enjoy it in peace. Like all chimps, Buxom has an extremely strong jaw and bites easily into his. Jester's dexterity is impressive as he walks with not just one, two, but three melons and he heads straight for Boss Butch out of respect. But Butch is more interested in his own. Paco has finally realised no one's impressed with his display of strength. And Mojo's now tucking in. But he doesn't like the pips. The fruit is going down a storm with the bachelor boys. A day of eating fruit like this replicates a behaviour in the wild, where a group will find a fruit source and gorge on it until it's all gone. In the end, everyone gets to enjoy the fruit, and some even resort to stashing it away. Low-ranking Charlie has only managed to find lemons and has to hide in a tunnel to eat them. But boys being boys, they can't resist having one last scrap to finish off an exciting day. However, Big Boss Butch soon puts a stop to it. Over at the Woolly Monkey House, it's a little more peaceful after quite a dramatic night. It's been a very exciting day because Paquita's had her baby finally. This is really good news for both the park and Paquita. Woolly monkeys are really, really rare in captivity and in the wild, so any birth is this huge event for all of us. Also, knowing Paquita as an individual, we're all just really proud of how she's doing. She's had quite a rough experience in the past with her last baby passing away. So this time, we're all really proud she sort of picked herself up, had another pregnancy and now delivered a healthy baby. So how are mom and baby doing so far? Paquita's absolutely fine. She looks absolutely worn out. Yesterday, when we thought she was in labour, she was actually starting to fall asleep whilst she was sitting up. We all felt for her. She looks like she's had a bit of a long night, so it's nice that they're resting together. And so far, things are looking really good. We've got the right number of fingers, right number of toes. It's wriggling round, looks nice and strong, and it's gripping onto her really well. So at the moment, we're just watching her to make sure that it's suckling, which is quite a difficult job to do, given that she's absolutely covered in fur. It's quite difficult to see what's going on. It seems that Dad Levar is over the moon. He's a very proud father. He's doing lots of displaying today, jumping around, making sure everybody knows that he's the big boss in here. And one-year-old Diego has a new sibling. Diego used to be the baby of the group. He doesn't seem to have quite accepted that he's not the youngster and deserves all the fuss anymore. But um, he has shown a slight interest in Paquita when I gave her a banana. He tried to mug her for it and it didn't go down well. But uh, other than that, he's sticking to the group rules of leaving Paquita to herself. He's just over a year now, so we've got quite a nice spacing of different ages of youngsters in the group. These guys are behaving more like a group in the wildwood. They're giving her her space when she needs it. They're showing interest and concern for her, but they're at the moment keeping their distance and hopefully they'll involve themselves when she's happy for them to. If they were all focused on her, she'd perhaps feel a little bit uncomfortable and there might be issues with how she treated the baby. But for now, she's being left alone and hopefully that means everything will go really well. A stalemate has developed between Arme and Oshin, who stay on opposite sides of the room. This is Arme's house, and to a certain degree, I mean, I'm quite pleased for her. She's put her foot down, and right now, she's in charge. So she's maintaining her dominance, which is quite a good and nice thing for Arme, because it really does make her feel ownership of her role as nursery mum. So it's all good. We just have to wait and see if 
it gets boring after a while because you can only maintain this Mexican standoff for so long. Oshin heads to the hoses to bark at Arme. From a distance, of course. Arme's not impressed and she gives chase again. No. Arme's not stopping and keeps up her pursuit of Oshin. Arme, no. Arme. Ah, ah. Stop it. You done? Jolly good. Control her, Arme. That last one was close. That was a tense encounter for Oshin and Arme, so the team decide it's time to draw it to a close. We'll call it to a halt now because he's doing really well and, you know, enough's enough. Oshin's getting a little bit out of breath. So, yeah, it's not a problem, but we'll just, you know, it's, it's got to happen slowly, this, this introduction. It's not love at first sight by any means. So Arme and Oshin return to their separate enclosures for the time being. Next time on Monkey Life. Tensions are high as old-timer Sammy goes under the knife. Whether you think it's a perfectly fit, healthy animal or, or an alien creature, there's always a risk with an anaesthetic. And the elderly stumpies get a new playground. Hey you, I know, I see you. <laughs>